morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, public uh, hearing of the Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resource Development is now uh, called to order. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone here. Let me uh, uh, recognize our uh, distinguished resource persons. Uh, first of all, our favorite secretary in this committee, uh, Dole Secretary uh, Silvestre Bello III, sir. Good morning. Oh, I see, uh, oh, I see Yusek Joji Aragon, uh, who's also here. Asik G.H. Ambat, uh, Department of Education. Um, um, Attorney Joseph Desunia, Social Security System, sir. Attorney Chelsea Ray Tade, PMAP. Hi, ma'am. Um, Executive Director Aimee Taganas from my favorite agency, TESDA. Attorney Jose Sani Matula, the chairperson, chairman of the Kaisa Labor Coalition. Um, sino ba siya? Attorney Mafeo Vibal, VP for External Affairs, Philippine Association of Retired Persons. Sir, good morning. Mr. Uh, Valerio Floro II, Secretary General, National Golf Association of the Philippines. Sir. Ms. Abigail Agrospe, representative of ECOP. Hi, ma'am. Mr. Joselito Ustares, uh, executive uh, vice chairperson, Kilusang uh, Mayo Uno. Maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pagdalo. Uh, we have here with us several uh, bills and uh, measures uh, that we are going to tackle this uh, morning. Medyo madami-dami po. But at this juncture, let me... Uh, give my uh, opening statement. Muli, uh, mapagpalang umaga sa ating lahat and uh, advance uh, happy 86th anniversary to the Dole family. Hindi ko nakakalimutan kung saan tayo nagsimula. Baka mapagalitan ako ni Director Nikki. There are several bills in our agenda today. The uh, subject of these proposals ranges from freelancers to kasambahays to incentives to golf caddies to alternative and voluntary work arrangements to training for older workers, among others. As I make uh, initial assessments and preparations for this hearing, and maybe as a result of my having uh, been part of the legislative branch for uh, quite a long time, um, and I would say considerable length of time, uh, isang makulit at demanding uh, katanungan po yung sumagi sa aking isip, bakit nga po ba sa kabila ng marami na nating batas, Eh, tila laging may kulang pa. At kulang pa rin, lalo na po pag ito ay issue ng uh, labor, issue ng manggagawa ang uh, pag-uusapan. Halimbawa po, may batas na tayo sa mga kasambahay, pero may bagong panukala po na nagtatakda ng isang special non-working holiday para sa mga household service workers. Uh, ito po ay uh, pinanukala ni Senator Ontiveros, Risa Ontiveros. Kailan lang naman po ay naipasa naman natin yung batas para dun sa telecommuting, uh, at ito'y malapit na malapit sa ating puso. Pero tuloy pa rin yung pagnanasa ng ating at panawagan ng ating mga manggagawa na magkaroon pa ng additional uh, working arrangements o itong tinatawag na alternative at voluntary work arrangements. At kaya ito po yung dahilan kung bakit uh, pinupush din natin itong uh, alternative at uh, voluntary work arrangements kasama ni uh, Senator uh, Bong Revilla. Laws and legislations on labor and social concerns are already consolidated and compiled in the Labor Code. Pero ngayon, may panukala para sa shared contribution scheme naman para sa mga golf caddies and other service workers being pushed by Senator Bong Revilla. Gayun din para sa training, para sa mga mature at older workers na isinusulong naman ni Senator Bato de la Rosa. Please don't get me wrong. I do not mean to trivialize the concerns of concerns on our table today. On the contrary, I am convinced that the sheer volume and variety of our concerns evidence our unwavering commitment to find ways to help the Filipino laborers in this era of unprecedented change acceleration. And this is what ought to be. Kasi po, uh, wala rin humpay ang mga problema at pagbabago sa ating lipunan at alam na po nating lahat na ang kapakanan ng mga manggagawa ay pundasyon at haligi na kung saan nasasalig ang buhay, kabuhayan, pagsulong at kaunlaran 
ng ating lipunan at bayan. At alam ko pong hindi lang tayo ang nag-iisip nito. I got a letter from um, from a senior high school student from uh, Angeles City sa Pampanga and she's calling my attention for immediate action for the injustices committed on our workers due to poor working conditions, maltreatment and other abuses. Kahit po pala mga bata eh nakikita rin itong mga kakulangan maging sa batas man o sa pagpapatupad ng ating mga batas. Indeed, we are here today to respond and to adapt to our surroundings, especially as our industries look to accelerate the adoption of robotics, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and big data in the context of uh, Industry 4.0. Sa bilis po ng pagbabago, sa kasalukuyang panahon, wala po tayong oras para magpatumpik-tumpik. Subalit, kailangan po nating himayin, pag-usapan, pag uh, uh, Pag-aralang mabuti at kung maaari po ay gawan, gawan pa natin ng masusing uh, pag-aaral ang mga panukalang nakahain ngayon sa ating kumite. Ang importante ay uh, makatugon po tayo sa patuloy na nagbabagong pangangailangan, patuloy na nagbabagong interes, patuloy na nagbabagong um, interes at kapakanan ng manggagawang Pilipino. Change is upon us. Let us catch up with change. Let us make change work for the Filipino workers. And may God help us accomplish the labor He bid us work on today for His greater glory and the welfare of His working Filipino people. Muli, marami pong salamat and uh, may God bless us all. At this juncture, let me uh, recognize our uh, distinguished colleague na laging present dito sa Committee on uh, Labor. May award na ho ito, perfect attendance sa uh, Committee, Senator uh, Nancy Binay, our Vice Chairman, Chair Chairperson ng ating uh, Committee. Gandang umaga, kapatid. Sige po, at this juncture, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just tackle everything. Siguro, if, if, if in the first round, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, acknowledge our resource persons and give their position papers before we could probably ask uh, questions. Uh, we'll, we'll give the floor now to uh, Secretary uh, uh, Silvestre uh, Bellio. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator siguro Nancy. bago magsalita si Secretary uh, Bellio. Um, just for the record, gusto ko lang i-comment si Secretary. I've attended uh, several hearings for other committees. Kayo lang ho siguro yung, kung ako ho perfect attendance sa committee hearing ng labor, siguro sa mga cabinet secretary, kahu, kayo ho yung perfect attendance pag pinapatawag namin ho kayo dito sa Senado. I will second the motion and uh, we just want to put on record, Secretary, that we deeply appreciate your presence every time... Uh, we have a hearing and uh, may mga patawag po tayo. And kaya naman, Senator Nancy, hindi na tayo nabibigla pag nandito si Secretary. Even in the budget hearing, isa sa pinakamabilis na ahensya na na-approve ang budget is the Department of Labor and Employment. So kudos to the leadership of uh, Dole. We give the floor now to Secretary Bellio. Sir, you have the floor. Honorable Chairman, uh, Joel Villoneva. Honorable Nancy, my co-resource persons present this morning, thank you for holding today's public hearing jointly with the Committees on Social Justice, Welfare and Rural Development, Trade, <laughs> Commerce and Entrepreneurship, Justice and Human Rights, and also Ways and Means. The dollar is certain that the bills for discussion today intend to facilitate the nation's adoption into emerging forms of alternative work arrangements and the need to conform to global trends for greater flexibilities at work. We note with great policy concern the increasing number and changing landscape in work arrangement to include freelancing, self-employment of workers, and entrepreneurship as we enter the age of agile and mobile work as preferred by young workers. While the Labor Court covered these jobs with employer-employee relationship, these types of work arrangement like self-employment, craftsmanship should now be considered through legislation. We reiterate your honors, our support to pursue through legislation voluntary arrangement between companies and their employees that are mutually beneficial and at the same time will not diminish 
existing rights and benefits under the Label Code. The DOLE also recognizes that we share a common view in promoting work-life balance, productivity, competitiveness, and at the same time, look at ways to help alleviate certain pers persisting conditions like the worsening traffic in the metropolis. Your Honors, I meet therefore with the DOLE heads of offices for closer discussion with you on all these said bills. Thank you very much and magandang maga po. Thank you po. Uh, perhaps if we can, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, perhaps if we can uh, remind our resource person, siguro yung just to briefly uh, give your uh, position on each of the following uh, um, measures on the table. Uh, first, itong uh, alternative work arrangements, SB number 153. SB number 673, and I, I, if I may say this, last Congress, we were able to pass this actually on third reading, and uh, we were about to uh, conduct the bicameral uh, conference committee, kaso hindi po natuloy, and there's a very, um, um, I would say, hindi naman controversial, but it's the most uh, uh, talk about issue yung pong, uh, when it comes to uh, the overtime pay, and uh, perhaps later we, we, we will 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 ask uh, Dole about it. Uh, and then the se the second uh, set would be the protection to freelancers and self-employed persons, SB number one five five, SB number six four four, and then the third would be the protection to golf caddies, SB number six six one. Um, then SB number 789, which is the Kasambahay Day, uh, declaring uh, January 18 of every year a special non-working holiday for all Kasambahays in the entire country. And last but not the least is SB number 234, um, an act establishing a job training program for mature or older workers. At this juncture, may, may I give, uh, may, may we recognize uh, ASEC GH Ambat from the Department of uh, Education. Ma'am, you're recognized. You have the floor. Uh, we are invited to speak on uh, SBN 234, which is uh, for, which aims to uh, provide training for adult and mature workers. Uh, we would like to say that, depart that the Department of Education is supportive of any policies and programs that promote lifelong learning or uh, helps us in achieving SDG 4. Uh, in 2016, as you may know, Your Honor, no less than President Rodrigo Duterte directed the Department of Education to intensify and strengthen its implementation of the alternative learning system. The alternative learning system is the second chance education program of the department for those who have dropped out of school or for those who are not able to finish basic education in the formal system. With the new curriculum, which is K-12 aligned, we've also introduced the life skills modules, which will um, hopefully equip our learners or those who will graduate from the program with uh, work readiness and civic engagement competencies. Uh, as a whole, Mr. Chair, with the uh, Fourth Industrial Revolution, the challenges and opportunities. It is, uh, the, the legislation, SBN 234, is timely as we need our adults to upskill, we need them to retool, and we need them to learn more competencies so that they can uh, be able to maximize the opportunities, Mr. Chair, of Industrial Revolution 4.0. That'll be all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Nagrema sa akin yung lifelong learning and uh, its importance. I, I'm beginning to miss my uh, education uh, sector family. Um, let's um, let's let's uh, give the floor now to. Uh, she used to be my chief of staff, um, Director Aimi Taganas of uh, of uh, Tesda, and uh, you are invited here also for for SB number two three four. But if you can, if you would also react on some other uh, measures, your free to uh, uh, give your comments. Director Aimi, you're recognized. Thank you, my former boss. <laughs> and thank you uh, for inviting TESDA. Good morning, Sir Chair and um, Vice Chair. Uh, uh, we were invited to 
uh, by the committee to to speak on Senate Bill 234, uh, an act establishing a job training program for mature and older workers. And for this one, we support this uh, proposed Senate bill simply because we test that abut lahat is slogan. The agency does not discriminate as regards to the beneficiaries of test this program and services, which also includes the older worker. Based on based on our uh, study on employment of Tibet graduates, there is. Um, big percentage of the Tibet graduates uh, from 20, 35 to 44 years old, there is a 19.91% of the Tibet graduates are in that um, age distribution. And we are also training uh, 50, 45 to 54 years, which accounts for 11%, 55 to 64, which accounts for 40 4.35 percent and 65 over for 1 percent of the total training and graduates of the Tibet program. And so, uh, with regard to that particular measure, that's what, what you're what you're having right now with this is 11 percent. Yes, sir. Because it says here 40 and above. 40 right? and above. Uh, yes. And, and Senator Nancy is asking me if uh, if you're 40, are you considered old? Not yet. <laughs> I'm no. okay. But we cater also to the 40, as I've mentioned in the statistics that uh, I have just read. And uh, of course, TESDA also recognizes uh, prior learning. We call its recognition of prior learning principles in our uh, competency, uh, competency standards development and in the training regulations development. And we can design a specific programs which cater to the specific needs of the industry. So if the, if the industry would uh, ask us to design program depending on the requirement, we can always design together with them. So whether it's for self-employment, whether it's for wage employment, we can also cater the training programs for those specific sector. And we finally, uh, uh, got a chance to to get funding for the Tulong Trabaho yeah. Act, which uh, was not funded at all <laughs> when you came here in uh, in the Senate. So we we're, we're going to pursue that, right? And uh, this would probably uh, benefit the uh, if we are to pursue this uh, measure uh, regarding uh, protection to mature workers. Yes, sir. De definitely, po, because. Uh, we also cater for the uh, skills upgrading of uh, already skills. Uh, I mean, upgrading of the workers already in the in the industry. It's just a quick question. When you talk about 11% kanina, yung 40% and above, uh, 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 it would translate to how many? Yung uh, 11% So that's that's around 167,000. 947 according 167, to this. Yeah. Thank according you. To this, yeah. Thank you, Director Aimee. At, this, ju at this juncture. There's the another one. Oh, there's sir. another one. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I was supposed to ask that. Yeah, there's another one. This is Day. No, no, sir. This is for Senate Bill 644. Okay. This is for uh, further strengthen further strengthen the standard of protection enhancement of the welfare of the self-employed workers and craftsmen for the, and the promotion of the entrepreneurship. So as I've said, uh, we also give scholarship programs and uh, most of our scholarship programs included also entrepreneurship training program, uh, which is really for the self-employed. And so we also support the, the bill for self-employed workers. And uh, we also develop standards for even for agro entrepreneurship, that would cater for uh, to the uh, agro. Uh, I mean, the farmers in the in the even in the uh, sugar industry, even in agri fishery related uh, competencies. That's all, sir. Thank you. Uh, quick question: uh, How many? If we have a data, uh, if if we have a data how, as to how many freelance and self-employed. Uh, workers have uh, graduated from TESDA programs, and how many are actually enrolled, if we have a data right now? 
Uh, no, sir. Sorry. Wala, uh, we will wala. submit that. Oh. But on the average then, siguro, kahit average, yung yearly average as to how many of these uh, workers graduate from uh, from a TESDA course? Yeah. Uh, generally, sir, our annual annual graduate in Tibet is uh, around 1.9 million. That's for Tibet graduates. And um, around... Uh, for a specific sectoral allocation, for example, graduates for agri, for example, that accounts to 13%. And but it's not just agri when you talk about freelancers and self-employed uh, workers. Yeah. So anyway, we can, can, you, we can, can you get just, back uh, to uh, you, uh, sir. And, and at the same time, how, uh, what's the rate of certification also? Yeah, right now, sir, our certification rate is 92%. Yeah. Across uh, That's all a the general trade discipline. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this juncture, I'll give the floor to Secretary Bellio. Uh, to I was given a note here that uh, Dolly wants to uh, make a specific comment on each of the 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 bills. Sige, ha, yes, Your Honor. Uh, with your permission, we would like to state our position on the pending bills before your committee, Your Honor. Uh, First, Your Honor, we would like to reiterate our support for Senate Bill 153 and Senate Bill number 673. This is in pursuance of our existing policy to recognize voluntary work arrangement between companies and their employees that is mutually beneficial and does not diminish existing standards and benefits such as overtime pay premium and night shift differential. As a form of alternative work arrangement, compress work week from work week, promotes work life balance and productivity as well as competitive of competitiveness of industries. As input your honor, we suggest that the hours or work of work in any given working day under a compressed work week shall not exceed twelve hours. We would also like to note that compressed work week is not always a four-day work week. The duration of the compressed work week varies. It may be a three-day or a five-day compressed work week depending on the normal work week of the company. Finally, Your Honor, we propose that Dole be expressly given the power to limit the applicability or coverage of the compressed work week vis-a-vis -vis the position involved or function performed, taking into consideration the health and safety of the employees. Thank you. B before you continue, that's, that's, that's all for the two measures, right, sir? Yes, yes uh, Your Honor. Just, just to cl make a clarification, so, so not exceeding 12 hours a day, not, you, you're not um, um, basing it on a per weekly basis, right? So in a day, kailangan maximum not, of not 12 hours. Yes, Your Honor. Another, another issue, sir, no, and uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to uh, put on record the importance of work-life balance, and that's the reason why we're pushing for these uh, mm -hmm. measures. Uh, with regard to the department's uh, current policy on the payment of overtime uh, uh, pay, night shift differential, and other statutory uh, benefits to workers who are under the uh, alternative work arrangement, especially those under a compressed work week. L let's talk about the, the, the current policy, because last Congress, uh, Dole submitted a letter to the committee uh, and sabi po dun that, uh, and I quote, waiver of overtime pay is questionable. Essentially changing the current rule on the payment of overtime pay to workers under a compressed work week arrangement. So, ang, ang question ko, do, do, do you still maintain the same view or have you already uh, issued a new regulations uh, to reflect uh, uh, this uh, policy shift because this was the, the main focus of our debate in, on, on the plenary during uh, uh, the uh, last Congress. But before you answer, let me acknowledge our uh, Bart Topnatcher here, our uh, former Senate President, uh, Senator uh, Coco Pimentel. Thank you, sir, for being here.
if you want yes, to answer. Honor, or uh, on that issue, Your Honor, we now present our position that the issue of overtime pay cannot be waived by the worker, Your Honor. Cannot be waived. Cannot be waived. Meaning to say, uh, Secretary, pag, kasi sabi ho natin 12 hours, so after uh, 12 hours, that is kung wala silang uh, 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 tawag dito, wala silang usapan. Automatic yung overtime. Pero kung may usapan, sabi nyo, hindi ma-waive. Hindi po pwede i-waive your honor. So meaning to say, after 8 hours, Yung, 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 and if it's 12 hours, overtime pay na yung 4 hours. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Sige, oh, please ka continue with, with, unless you have other questions. It's the same. It, it, it cuts across. No, Senator Nancy is asking if it cuts across different industries. For example, if you're talking about uh, film industry na medyo mahaba, derecho, and uh, you say um, you can only, will not exceed 12 hours, but in some cases, uh, they would exceed more than uh, uh, 12 hours of uh, straight working, sir. Your, our position, Your Honor, that in a, uh, an arranged work, work day week, we cannot go beyond 12 hours a day, Your Honor. That is the position of the... Okay. Okay. Secretary. Uh, in a voluntary arrangement, work should work should not regularly exceed 12 hours. But w when is overtime in uh, in that setup? After eight hours? After eight, eight hours, Your Honor. Oh, that's So you know, so at least, claro. Yes, Your Honor. Si Senator Nancy is asking. We're working here for 12, 14 <laughs> hours last budget season, no? Last week. We're supposed to get overtime pay daw ba? That is also your opinion. Hindi naman tayo, Mr. Chair, but yung, ta well, katulad doon kasi dito sa Senate, di ba, um, naka for, naka for the work week, work week tayo, and our staff wor usually work um, more than eight hours. And I don't think, na, dapat, pero I don't, hindi na ho ata na charge ng overtime yung, yung after eight hours nila na work. Kasi nga, four days lang sila nagtatrabaho. Co covered bill pa rin, Your Honor. Covered pa rin. Basta beyond eight hours, it's already overtime, Your Honor. Hmm. Ito yung standard, sir. Sa government, sir. Iba po yung standard. Sa, sa government, eh, ayaw kong pakialakaman sa Civil Service Commission niya, Your Honor. <laughs> So, we're limiting it to private sector muna. Private sector tayo, Chairman, para hindi tayo malito. So, so mahirap, sir. Mahirap mag-voluntary uh, arrangement of uh, scheme, uh, hours of work. Kasi uh, if you adopt the Senate's model, for example, of a four-day work week, then the, although the total number of hours is in a week, is the same as the six times eight. It, it becomes four times twelve. It will become more expensive because may overtime sa apat na araw. That is true, Your Honor. Kaya 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 that's, that's, what, uh, what, that's what we are realizing now, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, also remember that in this particular measure, this is optional. It's, uh, it has to be uh, 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 agreed upon by both parties. Pero, Mr. Chair, para mawawala ng incentive to pursue yung ganitong classing work arrangement, kasi nga, para mas malaki yung magiging cost dun sa employer if they pursue this kind that of thing. Is a correct uh, statement? Uh, uh. Your Honor, uh, under the law, that is the working hour, which is eight hours. Beyond that is already overtime. So, if you want to make a complete uh, arrangement, more responsive to what you feel should be the uh, overtime pay, then you have to amend Article 87, Your Honor, on overtime pay. Mm. Okay, that's, 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 that's clear. Sige po, Secretary, in other measures, unless uh, my colleagues would, would like to...
pursue some on, more uh, questions on the Senate bill number. Sir, sir, sorry, sorry, uh, I, 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 I can't help this because I wanted to, to, to dis now, now I'm, I, I'm, I'm more uh, inclined to, to discuss more about the alternative work arrangements. So, right now, based on your data, I'm sure there are establishments adopting uh, an alternative uh, working arrangements. Are they paying uh, overtime pay if, uh, for example, the workers will, will work for 12 hours a day, four times a week? Yes, Your Honor. They still get the overtime pay. They, they still uh, yes, pay? Yes, Your Honor. Even if it's an arrangement between labor and management. Even if it means it's uh, more costly? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sige po. Sige, Dari. Mr. Chair, siguro just to pursue, uh, Secretary, can you siguro cite an example kung saang industriya uh, nagkakaroon ng ganitong type of arrangement? I think this, you know, yung work arrangement na uh, reduced to four, four day a week, Your Honor, is maybe most common sa mga manufacturing companies, Your Honor. Manufacturing companies. Sige po, Secretary, thank you. Uh, we, we can proceed to the next bills. 155, Your Honor. This is authored by Your Honor. We support the noble intention of the bill, Your Honor. We believe that while the Department will not have active role in the enforcement of the measure once passed, freelance workers also deserve protection from the state. Decent work is all for, wo for all workers. In this bill, the protection of the state affords that, that the state affords is civil and criminal in nature, enforceable in ordinary courts of law. We therefore propose that in consultation with the Supreme Court and the National Prosecution Service under the Department of Justice, the measure should have clear cut and effective enforcement procedure, especially the free access of the freelancers to the courts as well as the prosecution and investigatory agencies, Your Honor. Currently, uh, just to per pursue this uh, measure, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, what are the current labor uh, protections accorded to freelancers and self-employed professionals? Kung hindi natin ipapasa itong batas na to, anong nagko-cover sa kanila? Your Honor, unfortunately, wala because they are not covered by labor standards, Your Honor. And that's why it's important that it's we, important we that pass we this apply. measure. Thank you. That's a very uh, telling statement, uh, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Because uh, if I may say, you know, just for the record, the 2019 Global Gig Index noted that the Philippine freelance market in 2019 grew in market revenue by 35%, making it the sixth largest freelance market in the world. So this is uh, uh, very telling, and, I th and, and that's why uh, we, 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 we wanted to uh, pursue this measure, and uh, we, we hear you clearly, Mr. Secretary, uh, in your call to have a clear-cut enforcement uh, procedure, and we will... Uh, uh, continue to discuss and coordinate with uh, with Dole, with uh, DOJ on this uh, particular matter. Secretary, please proceed with the other uh, measures. On Uh, Your Honor, on SB number 61, authored by the Honorable Senator Revilla, Your Honor, we at Dole are supportive of the measure. All workers, including the self-employed, as well as those without any definite employees, employers, must have social protection. Cadiz and other related service workers are also exposed to the contingencies of the work. Therefore, they too must be covered by social welfare benefits. We, however, defer to SSS, to Field Health and Pag-ibig, being the appropriate government agencies to provide the specific comments and inputs to the proposed measure, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. 
gentleman to the aisle. On the uh, SB number... Before you oh, leave, seven, eight, nine. Mr. Secretary. Yes, Your Honor. A question ko, bakit ba sila hindi employee ng, ano, ng golf clubs? Kasi they pro, at least dito sa Pilipinas, a golf club will not survive without a caddy. That is true, Your Honor. Pero wala kasing ano, Your Honor, walang employer-employee relationship mm. between the caddies and the Sige nga, ano bang uh, definition natin, ano bang tests natin to have, to determine employer-employee? Da, idaan natin sa test, di ba? There, is a, there must be a test uh, where to, to, to determine whether uh, the relationship is one of employer-employee. Uh, what, what is the test? What are the For the uh, caddy to, begin, um, to become an employee of the club of your honor, oh. there must be an employment contract between the two of them. Ordinarily, it's not uh, the club that uh, hires the caddy or honor, it's the golfer. However, oh. it does not prevent the clubhouse from hiring caddies, Your Honor. And there are instances where caddies are hired by the clubhouse. In which case, they will be covered by all labor standards governing employee-employer relationship. Hindi, pero kung optional kasi yan, then they will not hire the caddy. But they cannot exist without the caddy. That is true, Your Honor. Kaya nga. So, uh -huh. so, Mr. Chair. so how come, if, if we apply the test, then they should be employees of the of the employ of the Golf club. Uh, well, it should be your honor. I mean, to have a, a perfect arrangement, it should be. But however, the practice is that they don't have it's because it's the caddy that chooses the. I mean, the player that chooses the caddy. Oh, may mga caddy jan your honor na walang pumipili sa kanila. Uh, yung golfer ang namimili. May mga silang mga favorite uh, caddies. Meron pa nga silang favorite umbrella girls, your honor. Eh. Umbrita, no? Umbrella girls? <laughs> oh, meron din po, Your Honor, eh. Siguro, Mr. Chair, just to add, as a golf widow, uh, <laughs> dun sa conversation, dun sa uh, discussion, ang isa pa din, ano eh, San Coco, pwede din mag-survive ang isang club na walang caddy because yung, yung golfer, may option din siya to carry his own uh, clubs or drive his own golf cart. So, parang yun yung isang, pwedeng sabihin ng club na the club will survive kasi pwede din si golfer magbit-bit ng sarili niyang caddy. Ne, that's why may, meron nga akong qualifier na umpisa sabi ko in the Philippines. Hindi magsusurvive. Yung mga hindi nagka-caddy, yung nagpa-practice sa tournament na walang caddy. Parang ganun yata yun eh. Uh, so, yung mga Junior golfers, yata, ganon. So, hey, Your Honor, so, uh, just to just to remind everyone, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Valeriano Floro the second, the Secretary General of National Golf Association of the Philippines. But we'll hear from him later, after after all this, no. Uh, I agree, Your Honor, yeah. with the Honorable uh, Senator Pimentel. Na very rare that a, a player, a golfer, plays without a caddy. Oh, yon. Even if there is. A, uh, already a golf cart, Your Honor. Uh, they still use caddy. Philippine context, huh? Yes, Philippine Your Honor. context. Uh, even in the States, already uh, evolving into having some caddies. I, three years ago, I played there, but there was one caddy for the four players because it's very expensive, Your Honor. Uh, uh. Secretary, kanina ako nabang, nabanggit kasi ni Secretary yung uh, ano tawag doon? Umbrella girl. Umbrella girl. So that, that, that gives me my ano ho eh. No, kasi I want, yes, yes, because I wanted to find out also, uh, meron bang mga, in your department, meron bang mga complaints? And what most common issues are raised in these complaints? And how are they resolved? Uh, so far, Your Honor, we have no record of any umbrella girl complaining, Your Honor. Or caddies. Or caddies, Your Honor. Usually, the umbrella girls get better compensation, Your Honor. I... I suppose. But, but, do that, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, maybe the department has not received any complaints, but definitely some, some caddies have complained directly to players, uh, to, to those who have hired them. Even umbrella. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. Uh, but, but we have, for example, Dolly have a specific uh, 
occupational health. Yeah, pwede natin ipasok doon. Occupational uh, health and safety guidelines for workers in uh, golf clubs, for caddies and umbrella girls. That is to your honor. We still have to maintain our uh, mandate to see to it that in all workplaces, the workers are uh, provided with uh, occupational safety and health. And meron ho, specifically for caddies and uh, those who are working in the golf course? Or it, it's... Walang specific. Nakita ko si Benjo is saying walang specific. So, so ibig sabihin, kung walang specific, baka kailangan pag-isipan natin yung mabuti. Kasi pag sinabing ano, umbrella girls, parang iba na yung ano eh. Iba na yung dating. <laughs> Pati dito sa bulwa, sa ano to, iba yung tawa nung, yung reaction eh. So marami, may, I'm sure maraming gustong mag-complain, hindi lang makapag-complain. No? Formal, formal complaint. No? Yeah. Uh, Your yeah. Honor, in fairness, uh, although I've stopped playing golf since I joined the Department of Labor, uh, my experience will tell us that uh, the umbrella girls are better treated than the caddies, Your Honor. Me too. I'm not. I'm not a golfer, uh, Mr. Secretary. But according to Nancy, who is a self-proclaimed uh, golf widow, golf widow um, pag mali daw ho yung turo ng kadi, mas nakakadalas na na papagalita na hanggang namumura na hindi po yung uh, kalakaran. Anyway, uh, pero hindi uh, Secretary tama po ba? You they don't receive minimum eh. Minsan they get higher pay, di ba? Yung mga kadi. In fact, may mga success stories ho dyan na nagkakadi lang pero naka, nakapagtapos yung mga anak ng college. That is true, Your Honor. Actually, wala namang uh, agreed compensation. Pero uh, among may golfers, Your Honor, meron, lang silang, eh. silang, ano, meron silang standard. Uh, pagka kasi medyo makunat ka, Pagdating ng next game mo, wala, na, wala ka lang makuha ang kadi hero. Secretary, <laughs> can we uh, proceed to uh, SB number uh, 789? Yes, or, Your Honor. The bill seeks to acknowledge and thank all the individual work and services of Kasambahay. The declaration of the national holiday for all Kasambahay shall be a work-free day for them in order for them to enjoy the celebration and be able to participate in the activities organized by Dole. The Dole would like to note, Your Honors, that we are already, we have already have numerous holidays in the Philippines. If a day will be declared as a special non-working holiday, the general rule of no work, no pay applies. If an employee does not report to work, he or she does, is not entitled to pay. If the employee works, then the employer is obliged to pay a premium pay. Dole, therefore, Your Honor, proposes that January 18 be declared instead as a special working day and not a special non-working holiday. The celebration of the Kasambahay Day can be calendared during the rest of the period of the Kasambahays, namely on a Saturday or Sunday. The Department of Education may, during the school day, calendar Thanksgiving activities for Kasambahays who bring school children to school. The Dole can is also spearhead talks on the importance of Kasambahay on the sound and economic life of Filipinos. The SSS, PhilHealth, and Pag-ibig may also undertake the opening of special centers to facilitate the membership campaign for our Kasambahay, Your Honor. Thank you, Secretary. Isang tara lang, <laughs> Chair. Um, Namamonitor ba natin yung compliance ng mga employer pagdating ko dun sa kasambahay law? Yes, Your Honor. We have, we, although it's very difficult to conduct inspection, Your Honors, because you have to go to the houses, we will rely heavily on the information we get from the kasambahay, Your Honor. Kasi for example, sa SSS and PhilHealth, ang alam ko maliit yung percentage na uh, may, may SSS at PhilHealth yung mga kasambahay. So, hindi ko alam kung um, 
bahagi ho ba ng monitoring ng dolly yon or it's up to um, SSS and PhilHealth to make sure na nakakaroon ng ganong benepisyo yung mga kasambahay? Principally, Your Honor, it is the responsibility of SSS that the contribution of the kasambahays are duly complied with by the employer. But we do help the SSS, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, meron akong tanong dito pero balik ako dun sa, sa golf muna. De, kasi example lang, para lang for the record. Uh, I have been informed, for example, in gyms, the, the uh, patron, the customer, or the client can choose his trainer or fitness instructor. And the trainer, the fitness instructor, is an employee of the gym. So, uh, that should not be the main obstacle to making caddies and umbrella girls employees of golf clubs. I can understand the concern of the, your honor. However, the gym situation is very different from the golf situation, your honor. Because when you go to a golf course, your honor, our, our uh, representative from the National Golfing Association will attest that there are hundreds of golf uh, of caddies waiting for the golfer to get them. Uh, the golfer, your honor, I'm saying, has a wide, wide latitude of choices, including the umbrella girls. Although, among us golfers, your honor, eh, meron na kami suki. When we go to a golf course, we already have a, uh, a golfer in mind. The, the clubhouse has no say. And, and perhaps it's it's also a, a good uh, a thing to mention that in some cases in 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 in, gym, in, in, uh, in, in a gym, yung iba po freelancers hindi sila employed dun sa is that correct ano? In a gym, your honor, uh, with all due respect, walang choice masyado yung mga mag mag gym. Unlike in the in the golf courses. When you go there, you, you, the club cannot ask you to get a specific uh, uh, caddy. You have a free choice. Or, or, meron na, may then that's correct. Uh, Siguro nakikita ko nga. So, kunyari, as of the moment, let us say 200 caddies. Tama ba yun sa? Uh, realistic ba? 200 caddies one day. Naghihintay sila at 5 a.m. Para makumakuha na sila, di ba? Uh, hindi naman assured din na makukuha yung, yung 200 na yun, di ba? Oh, hindi rin assured yun. Yes, you're on. Oh, but sa other scenario natin, if uh, 100 are hired as employees of the club, therefore the players, uh, the, the players' choices will be limited to the 100. Ganun lang, ganun lang yung bag, yun lang yung reality na magbabago. But the point is, we have established the employer-employee relationship. Pero tignan natin yung pros and cons nga. Because necessarily, the golf clubs will limit the opportunity to earn uh, 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 by the caddies not to earn, limiting their number because magiging employees sila. But reality also is, although if you are now maximizing the number of caddies who can potentially earn, it is also true that they do not all earn. Tama ba yun? No? I mean, they do not all earn. They are not all tapped for in the day, I, I'm sure. I, sugurado ako ron. So, that is true, Your Honor. Uh, that is true. So, so there are well, many days when a caddy does not uh, get to play because uh, usually, talagang ganyan ang practice sa mga golfers, mm. Your Honor, meron na silang caddy. Hindi, pero so, naging favorite naman yun kasi na-try niya eh. Nung umpisa, nung una siya okay. naglaro doon, na-try niya or uh, no, nagustuhan niya. But from the very start, na-limit na sa choices niya sa employee. So, uh, uh, my, my point is, Mr. Chairman, the fact that the player can choose should not be the obstacle from, uh, from making the caddy as well as the umbrella girl employees of the golf clubs. That's my point. Because there is a model, another enterprise, na ganun din po. Nakapili sila. But pagpasok niya sa gym, na-limit na yung choice niya dun sa uh, employee instructors of the gym. I agree, yeah. Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with the Honorable uh, Senator. Na 
uh, employment arrangement can be uh, established between the caddy and the clubhouse, Your Honor. Pero sa umbrella girl, I doubt very much, Your Honor. Oo, talagang and, pantasyan. And eh. Secretary, kami ni Senator Nancy, we're talking about, perhaps some of them would, would fall under uh, freelancing. And, 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 and that's why perhaps it is also a good idea to revisit the definition of employer-employee relationship when you talk about freelancers. And, and I think, siguro, Mr. Chair, dun sa, itong sa golf, I think yung club, ha, yung club itself is just providing a venue para dun sa mga caddy, para magkaroon sila ng trabaho. Kaya siguro walang, parang technically there's no direct relationship between the club and the caddies. Kasi para dun sa club, ang binibigyan ko na kayo ng venue para magkaroon ng trabaho. Because nga, ang, ang yes. assumption is, ang nag-hire sa inyo yung player, hindi mismo yung club. Kaya, in, in effect nga, ganito ba, ganito ba yun na, okay yung caddies, pasalamat kayo na may golf club. Pero in the Philippine context nga, yun ang sinasabi ko, yeah. no golf club will survive na walang kadi In the Philippine context, oh. So, yun ang tanong. So, sino ang dapat magpasalamat? <laughs> si Kadi ba sa golf club o si golf club sa Kadi? Oh. Uh, Perhaps, so, uh, Senator Coco, uh, we'll, we'll break the chain. We'll, we'll give the floor now to Mr. Uh, Valeriano me, 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 Coro. Hindi, meron lang. Bago, bago, bago yung Mr. Okay. May tanong lang ako kay Secretary. In the Philippine context, kailangan ba, yung, mag, kailangan ba si Umbrella Girl? Your Honor, <laughs> yung... <laughs> Kung sasagot, but you know, opinion, <laughs> siguro yung huwag natin ligyan ng mali siya. Kasi like may, may mga ka... Isishare ko lang, yung mga kagrupo ng asawa ko, meron nga siya isang kasama, may tagabit-bit pa ng upuan niya. Di ba, Secretary, may mga ganon, tagabit-bit ng upuan niya, tagabit-bit nung payong niya na wala namang hanky-panky na, na, na nangyayari. In fact, it's a good, di ba, para nagbibigay din tayo ng dagdag trabaho. <laughs> may mga ganon, may mga ganon. Ano sure naman? na sure si Senator Nancy. Sure, sure na sure, sure ako. <laughs> Kaya ingat yung mga pinopost pinopo dyan na picture, baka biglang... Kaya hindi pa naglalaro sa subik yung asawa. Biglang si Pevito yung man dyan. <laughs> Your Honor, under, Fili under Philippine context, in Pal I think sa... Uh, a clubhouse cannot operate without a caddy. Oh, they really have to have caddies. Uh, that is why, Your Honor, as I was saying, a employer-employer relationship can be established depending on the arrangement between the caddy and the clubhouse, Your Honor. Thank you, Secretary. We give the floor to uh, Mr. Valeriano Floro. Pasensya na ho dun sa nalampasan. Considering ang daming questions ho dito. Sir, you're, you're recognized. You have the floor. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Uh, first of all, uh, Senator Bina, I'm sorry for contributing to being your, uh, to you being your uh, golfing widow. <laughs> uh, our position is we are against it, uh, uh, Your Honors, only because uh, we care for the caddies. Okay, uh, allow me to, to speak of this irony, no? Because, uh, un unfortunately, se Senators, uh, caddies, the world over, they're not, mandatory okay so uh, they are not integral to the golf operations nor the game of golf yes they are a big convenience no especially in the Philippines as you said senator uh, uh, lahat ng golfers sa Pilipinas nagkakadi but uh, actually sir, ano nin, it, it became kasi coming mga golfer naging spoiled eh. uh, so over the years no so naging mainit kasi sa Pilipinas versus you playing in Europe or in America, diba? so obviously, meron yan. And now, uh, since the 90s, medyo easy to get a golf cart now. So, so yung mga caddies, medyo hindi na ganun ka, ano eh, ka taxing yung trabaho nila. Okay, uh, now, uh, but again, uh, as Dole has ruled countless times and no less than the Supreme Court, uh, the caddies are independent contractors kasi wala ho nga silang in, uh, employer, employee relations. Uh, so basically, but w uh, just to give you a background, no, uh, Your Honors, when I started golf in the early 80s, when I was playing, caddies were not 
organized themselves. Eh. So they were waiting outside. Parang sad to say, if, if you can picture in California, di ba, there, are, uh, there are illegal uh, migrants that get work. No? Ganun ho dati sa mga golf club. Eh. They would stay outside the gates and wait for golfers to come and then, oh, kailangan nyo hong kadi, nandito ho ako. So, uh, again, but over the years, they have organized themselves and some have incorporated themselves into, I'll give you an example, uh, uh, in Wakwak, -Wak, there's the Wakwak -Wak Kadi Association Incorporated. In Alabang, there's the Alabang Kadi Association. Now, they govern themselves. Oh, and they are also in charge of getting their Kadis, uh, accrediting them, and training them, and they're the ones who uh, assign if they're not chosen by a specific player. So, sila ho lahat gumagawa niyan. Uh, that, that's why ho, they don't have any you know, any uh, employer-employee relationship with the clubs. Now, again, uh, the reason why I say that we're against it is because baka ho, we, we don't want it to get to the point na the clubs say na, hindi, sa labas na lang kayo ulit. And then you take your chances kasi we simply, as a club, speaking as a private club or even a public and military club, we cannot afford it. Diba? So, ang gagawin ho nila, baka... Uh, golf cart na lang tayo, parang America na tayo, or, or Europe, or, or the, the rest of the world, actually, with the exception of, of uh, Southeast Asia. Diba? Because nga, it's very hot, and, and spoiled na yung mga uh, golfer. So, that's our position po. So, spoiled talaga yung... Yes, Your Honor. Hindi ko sasabihin. And then, uh, just, 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 just one question. Uh, how, many, how many golf clubs are members of uh, National Golf Association of the Philippines? Your Honor, we have currently 65 member clubs out of the 102 uh, golf courses in the Philippines. Okay. And do you have any idea how many caddies uh, yung uh, nandun sa mga clubs na yun? M Mr. Chairman, I, I think sa isang, it's... Sa isang uh, golf club, oh, how many caddies? The bigger that? golf clubs, normally, Mr. Chairman, uh, keep a uh, complement of about maybe close to 300, 250 to 300. But we're talking of the big clubs like Manila Southwoods and, and all these private clubs that are in on or around the metro. But then the provincial clubs, uh, it's no way to track because uh, they, again, they just stay outside eh, and then bahala na, di ba? Kung sinong kumuha sa kanila. And, and, and just one last point before I give the floor to, to Senator Coco. In these clubs that you're talking about, in big clubs, are they assisting uh, for example, if their caddies wanted to, I'm sure meron ng relationship yan, medyo matagal na. Na-assist ba sila, for example, if uh, uh, they wanted to register sa SSS, PhilHealth, ganun, tumutulong ho yung uh, mga malalaking clubs na yan? Actually, Mr. Chairman, uh, no. Uh, it's their organization that does it. Sila mismo. And in fact, uh, ako when I go around and I see the caddy areas, may ano sila yung voluntary hulog eh. Uh, sa SSS. So I, I think that's how they do it. But it's, they, they have their own government, in, in other words. I mean, their own board. They have their set of officers. They have their president, so and so. So they, they, they govern themselves, and then they do that. Mr. Chairman, just in case Mr. Floro knows, no, what happens to the caddy who, who was not chosen the entire day? Anong, kit, anong income niya? Sadly, Your Honor, wala ho. Wala, sir. Siguro, Mr. Chair, if we will have another hearing, baka it's good if we invite um, somebody na, a caddy na member ng isang organized na, na grupo. Anyway, uh, uh, pa yung narinig ko kay Senator Binay, gusto mong i-outlaw ang ano, golf course? <laughs> Iban? Gusto mo i-ban? Hindi ba yun, tama ba yung narinig ko? Ganon. <laughs> Nung malaman niya, Senator Coco, na yun ang topic, ah, bababa ako dyan, bababa ako. Um, may hugot, may hashtag hugot. Sige, uh, Sir Floro. If I, if I may add, Mr. Chairman, uh, kasi the, the, even if you ask the caddies right now, they're happy with the system kasi each entity uh, survives and, and, and goes about their business harmoniously. Because, uh, as you know, the, the caddy association per club uh, they are the ones that set the minimum pay okay, per X number of holes. So 18 holes, the norm is uh, 600 pesos, 700 pesos. And, and now, but, but none of them 
none of them ever get paid below what they set. So they always get paid more, especially pag mas experience. Oh, well, <laughs> Madam Senator, pag mas experience in terms of magaling ka mag, mag golf assist, di ba? So some get paid more. Like, uh, admittedly so, uh, you were mentioning earlier, Madam Senator, kami ni JP, kami ni Pipito, we, we pay more kasi magagaling yung mga kadi namin eh. Di ba? So, Hindi ko nga sinabi yung pangalan, binanggit mo pa, Pambi. Sige, spoiled na nga si Pipito, sige. <laughs> Sir, Mr. Chair, share ko lang ha, nakaka, ilan na ba ako, dalawang eleksyon, at tuwing eleksyon, lagi sinasabi ng asawa ko, magkakampanya daw siya sa golf course. Kasi madami daw kadi na pwedeng maging botante. So sa tingin mo, naniwala ka naman. Nani uh, no, it's a different... Let, let's let's uh, proceed. Uh, we'll give the floor to uh, SSS, uh, Attorney uh, Desunia. You're recognized, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, magandang umaga, Your Honors. Una po, uh, nagpapasalamat po kami in behalf din po ni SSS President and CEO, si Ma'am uh, Baby Ignacio, sa pagkakataon na makibahagi kami sa paggawa ng mga panukalang batas. Uh, specific po doon sa requirements for SSS to submit comments on three bills, but at this point po, since the topic is uh, focused on uh, Senate Bill number 661, uh, we wish po to inform you po, uh, your honors, that we are now in the process of obtaining approval of the draft position statement. Ang una lang din po naming ibaha, uh, balak ibahagi is we are one with Congress in its efforts to provide social security and welfare benefits to golf caddies and other service workers in the numerous golf clubs scattered across the country. But in the proposals uh, in the uh, Senate Bill 661, we wish po to invite the kind attention of Congress that uh, there is basis in our charter uh, for covering uh, golf caddies and other service workers as self-employed po. Because uh, according to the definition of a self-employed in Section 8, Paragraph S of the law, that person is somebody whose income is not derived from employment. Another basis po is the decision of the Honorable Supreme Court in GR number 64948 Ito po yung Manila Golf and Country Club, Inc. versus Intermediate Appellate Court way back in September 27, 1994, wherein the holding of the Honorable Supreme Court was the golf caddy, si Mr. Uh, Fermin Yamar, is not an employee of the Manila and Golf and Country Club, and the latter is under no obligation to report him for compulsory coverage of the SSS. Uh, isa lang pong suggestion, if we may po, uh, sa batas po kasi na panukala, hindi na ilagay yung parang sa amin uh, appreciation. How is it being proposed for the golf caddies, service workers, and the golf mani uh, club management to jointly share? Sa batas po kasi ng SSS, may takdang halaga na po. Because we now have the employer share and the employee share in terms of uh, paying the contribution. So, sana po kung uh, may isa sa batas po ito, uh, if we may suggest na mailagay po sa batas mismo, hindi po sa rules and regulations because uh, there is an express uh, provision in the SS law about the specific uh, uh, amounts to be paid bo uh, by the employer and the employees. Uh, so yun po. Now sir, if I may, no, uh, do you have a data of as to how many registered members are uh, working as golf caddies sa SSS? Meron ho ba yun? Uh, I have with me po the, uh, because way back, sir, uh, uh, we see this as part of the parang uh, world of the, yung challenging po na informal sector, uh, ano po, ano. So, way, way, way back, the SSS, when it was reorganizing po, created a specific uh, unit uh, to handle these challenges dito po sa IS sector. Meron po kaming professional sector at meron din po kaming yung informal uh, uh, sector groups. Uh, our record po uh, as regards yung self-employed, uh, I have with me po the heads of these uh, uh, two functional units, no? As of, based on the data po of the Philippine Statistics Authority on how many are parang self-employed po uh, last 2018, na uh, mayroon po tayong 11.07 million, ang members po noon ay uh, uh, 4.5 uh, sa SSS po. Pero uh, hindi po siya parang disaggregated, no? Uh, kung ilan yung golf caddies, ilan yung ano. But uh, 
we have accounts. 4.5 yung, ano, no? yung uh, nakaregister. Correct, Your Honor. Uh, ang, ang, ang coverage po ng self-employed sa uh, uh, SSS, if we may uh, continue your honors po, nagsimula po ito noong mga 1980s pa. But in 1995, our governing board, the Social Security Commission, issued a resolution expanding the SSS coverage to uh, everybody, especially to the informal sector, without uh, regard po to trade, to business, or to enter uh, preoccupation. So talaga pong swak sila dito, pumapasok na po sila dito, pati yung mga uh, umbrella girls. Tapos yung mga tigalinis po nung sapatos sa mga uh, ng golfers kasi eh, hindi rin po nabanggit yon kanina. So yan po yung uh, SSS coverage po nila. That data, do, do we also have, uh, kasi kung 4.5 million yung registered, may, may data tayo dun sa mga self-employed na how many are paying jointly with their employers? Your Honor, ayo, no nga, sa informal, sa informal, I mean, sa informal sector. Is it all right, po, if we get back to you, po, on this? Because, po, what we have right now, po, is yung 40 percent na coverage sa ng para sa self-employed membership. Pero, yeah, pero Mr. Chair, kaya yung kuni ng SSS yung data, for example, ilan dun sa, kasi yung kasambahay part ng Classified ba sila as self-employed? Ah, hindi. May, may employer share eh. May employer share. Kung anong mga trabaho na itong mga self-employed. May ganun ba kayong data kung ilan yung caddy or ilan dito yung mga freelancer? For example, mga makeup artist na freelancer or, or ganitong industry nang gagaling itong mga self-employed. Your Honor, uh, we will try po our best. But just to give a picture po, ano, when a self-employed member po uh, files an application for mandatory SSS coverage, in the application po, we, we, uh, we ex uh, extract po the data by coming up with codes kung regular self-employed po ba yan. Because uh, in the SS law also is enumerated who are the regular self-employed members. Ito po yung mga professionals po natin. Opo. So, iba din po yung code noon. Uh, ito po yung mga actors, actresses working in the film industry and television industry, communications industry po. Kasama din po dyan yung mga uh, sports uh, 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 professionals po, athletes, uh, uh, jockeys, uh, mga trainers po. So, malaki po ang uh, ibig sabihin po ang uh, distribution ng self-employed uh, member category po sa SSS. Uh, Ita try po namin na makuha po yung available na napupuyeding ma-extract. Yes, Your Honor. We will comply po. Thank you. Can Can we hear now for? Sige po. Si Attorney Disonya kasi may na mention na another class of worker in the golf club. I'll ask Mr. Floro. Yung mga nasa locker room employees o hindi? Yes, Your Honor. Employees. Employed yung nasa club house. Na mention yun tagalinis na nasa patos and employees na yun. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Attorney Dizuna. You uh, may proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, another uh, bill po that was uh, submitted to us po uh, for uh, comment is uh, Senate Bill Number uh, 644, uh, an act to further strengthen the standard of protection and enhancement of the welfare of uh, self-employed workers, craftsmen, and the promotion of entrepreneurship. Uh, if it's okay po, uh, we are in the process of uh, preparing the formal written uh, position statement. But as initial comments, if we may po invite the kind attention of uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Committee, uh, specific to Section 7, uh, the first paragraph po is proposing that we should enroll all self-employed members. Uh, this is already po in the SS law. It is already operationalized. In fact, the coverage po of the self-employed is already mandatory. Yan po yung kay uh, Senator Revilla, no? kasi wala ho yan dun sa bill ko eh. Uh, is it uh, 644? You're talking about 644? Uh, yes, Your yes. Honor. Okay, okay. Not 155. Sige, okay. sige po, please proceed. Okay. So, uh, we're just inviting po the kind attention of uh, the uh, this committee po that this is already enshrined in the law. 
Our new loophole that Congress passed last March uh, 2019 is Republic Act 11199. What is being cited po pa dito is uh, yung pong 8282 pa. The second paragraph po is proposing also that uh, the enrollment for SSS coverage purposes should be done uh, directly by the self-employed workers or through their respective guilds, uh, unions, uh, cooperatives, or other associations acting as collecting agent for uh, premiums due to SSS. We just would like to report po to Congress that as early as uh, 2010, the Social Security Commission has already issued Resolution Number 972, Series of 2010, dated December 8, 2010. Ito po yung accreditation ng cooperatives po. This now is the governing guideline po on the activities of the cooperatives in terms of collecting and paying and sometimes servicing uh, agent of their uh, members. Uh, patungkol po dito sa associations, we also have in 2012 an office order dated uh, April 30, 2012, office order 2012, the 040, regarding po the guidelines adopted in the Alcantia program. Ito po yung nakikita natin malimit. Opo. Kasi napaka-challenging po talaga i-map yung mga nasa ganitong sektor. Yung income po nila ay hindi takda, hindi rin po regular, at hindi nga po sila ganun ka-organisado. So what we do po is to, uh, as an idea, come up with a coin box na nakalagay po doon, for example, sa mga TODA, Ito po yung hinuhulugan ng mga miyembro. Uh, considering po na monthly ang basis po ng pag-assess ng contribution based on the actual earnings or income of the uh, member of the TODA, for example, araw-araw po hanggang sa ma, uh, makuha nila yung takdang halaga. So, kinukolekta po ito at the end ng kanilang mga opisyales at ito po ay inirimit nila sa SSS together with the collect uh, uh, reporting uh, forms. So, uh, na ano po itong guidelines na ito, na revisa po itong guidelines na ito noong May 17, 2013. Uh, Again, it's possible but it's challenging. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 sabi ko nga po, sa, sa, sa short of 10 years na pag implement po namin ng Alcantia program, uh, may mga nai-encounter na po kami na mga concerns along the way. Minsan po, aktibo sila sa una. Parang typical naman po nung ating uh, 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 Filipino ano din po. Ano. Uh, another uh, provision po is as regards the proposed redefinition po of the word self-employed. Uh, opo, sa SSS po kasi, for SSS coverage purposes, we feel po and we earnestly uh, request po uh, your honors to reconsider na for SSS purposes, our definition is already uh, more than sufficient. Kasi po, ang distinction lang naman talaga nila is uh, ano ang basis and saan po nagdi-derive ng income. So if it's not from employment, ang default membership category po sa amin is either the regular self-employed or the expanded self-employed coverage, which is both uh, mandatory po sa uh, SSS. So yun po sana na kung maritain na lang po yun. And then if uh, we may move on po sa Section 8. It is being proposed in this bill that disputes now involving workers under this chapter, under the bill, is to, supposed to be under the jurisdiction of the regular courts without prejudice to the provisions of uh, Republic Act 9520. Ito po yung sa Philippine Cooperative uh, Code of 2008. Excuse me. Now, we are minded po to uh, invite again po the uh, uh, kind attention of this honorable committee that under our charter, section 5, paragraph A, the governing board of the SSS, the Social Security Commission, has jurisdiction po to settle all disputes. Uh, if I may read po into the records, any dispute arising under the Social Security Act with respect to coverage, benefits, contributions, and penalties thereon, or any other matter related thereto, shall be cognizable by the Commission, meaning the Social Security Commission. Parang ang lumalabas po dito sa proposal is, uh, by way of an inquiry, parang nawawala po yung uh, ano ng SSS. Given a stand-alone uh, legislative act naman po ito, but we 
we, we, we feel po that we have the duty also to uh, uh, report to uh, the Honorable Committee that there is that uh, provision. While uh, in law, it is not an exclusive jurisdiction on the part of the Social Security Commission, but we thought po that the Commission has been in existence since 1957. So the Commission as a specialized body handling these types of disputes has already gained some form of competence. So yun po yung pinanggagalingan namin doon. And last but not the least po uh, is the provision in Section 10 as regards the proposed penalty clause. Dito po kasi, <coughs> yung mga tao, association, entity, or institution found in violation of the proposed law is proposed to be punished po with a fine of not less than 50,000 or more than 100,000 pesos. Sa batas po kasi ng SSS, meron din pong imprisonment maliban lang din po sa fine or both at the discretion of the court. So again, we feel po that we are uh, duty bound to report po to the uh, uh, honorable committee that this might run in conflict po with existing laws already. And besides po, mas mababa yung fine as a penalty na nakalagay sa section 28 ng uh, batas ng SS. It's uh, a low of five and a high of 20,000 uh, pesos. Uh, for 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 our initial comments po uh, we will be submitting po our uh, formal uh, comments on this uh, thank you very much your honors thank you thank you very much attorney uh, Bisunya. Uh, we take note of your uh, comments we uh, give now the floor to uh, attorney Sani Matula the chairperson of uh, Nagaisa Labor Coalition yes. sir you're recognized thank you for uh, being here thank you chair Villanueva uh, Senator Vinay and uh, Senator Pimentel and representatives from the Department of Labor and Employment, from the Employees Group, from the Workers Group, uh, with the permission of the Honorable Chairman. Uh, with respect to Senate Bill 153, we have uh, some sort of hesitancy to support this proposal because it might be construed as extending the existing uh, eight hour work to 12 hours. And we might be uh, having a problem with ILO convention number one, which mandates that uh, the hour of, of work in a day is eight hours and uh, not more than 48 hours in, in a week. And uh, this proposal might uh, we might have a problem with, uh, with the health and safety of the workers. 12 hours uh, work a day, uh, my, we might have a problem. Uh, we might have a problem with the health and safety of the workers. And uh, of course, it, 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 it is, my, it is uh, tempting to have a three-day vacation. But uh, in the long run, I, I think uh, we will have a problem, particularly those working in the manufacturing, construction, and other fields which, uh, which call for the use of muscle. Yeah. Uh, ILO Convention uh, number one allows uh, only an hour extension of the eight hour work uh, day. And of course, managerial, uh, supervisory and uh, confidential uh, employees are exempted from that rule. And uh, uh, for the Federation of Free Workers in particular, uh, I, I think there's no need to, to enact a law on compressed work week and uh, with existing rules and regulations uh, uh, promulgated by the Department of Labor and Employment for temporary situation, I think uh, uh, that, that rules uh, will do at present. Uh, with respect to uh, the Gulf Cadiz, <laughs> I, I hope we can improve the coverage so uh, we, we, we can support this proposal, Senate Bill 661, and uh, the declaration uh, the, of January 18 as ka, Kasambahay Day, we can support that one. Uh, the establishment of job, tra job training uh, program for mature or older workers, 
the, uh, the trade union can support that proposal. The strengthening of the standard of protection and welfare of the self-employed as well. And uh, what else? I, I think uh, those uh, proposals can be supported by the trade union. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney uh, Sani. And uh, feel free also to uh, uh, submit your uh, position papers or even additional uh, uh, data or anything that would uh, help this committee uh, craft uh, uh, these measures. At this juncture, we'll uh, give the floor to... Uh, Mr. Uh, Joselito Ustares, the Executive uh, Vice Chairperson of uh, Kilusang Mayo Uno. Sir, you're recognized. Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng uh, ating mga uh, senador na rito ngayon, uh, Senador uh, Coco Pimentel and Senador Binay. Lalong lalo na po sa ating uh, chairman, maraming salamat po sa uh, inyong uh, uh, effort at uh, naimbita ang uh, Kilusang Mayo Uno dito sa uh, committee hearing na ito. Uh, magbigay lang po ako lang ilang uh, ilang uh, uh, comment doon sa House Bill uh, uh, Senate Bill uh, 153. Uh, doon po sa iba, magsasubmit uh, na lang po kami ng mga position paper doon sa ibang mga uh, Senate Bill na sa tingin po naman namin ay uh, magbibigay ng security uh, lalong-lalo na doon sa health and safety condition ng mga manggagawa. So, magbibigay po kami ng uh, uh, position paper regarding this. So, dito po sa House B uh, Senate Bill uh, 153, uh, panggitin ko po uli yung binanggit ko doon sa hearing ano, ng uh, Congress na uh, baka po hindi pa ready ano, yung uh, Pilipinas doon sa uh, pagbabago ng uh, Uh, schedule ng working uh, arrangement. Una-una, ano uh, gusto ko po yung mga banggi din, baka magkasala ako sa mga manggagawa sa buong daigdig. Ano? Yung pinagmulan po nung 8 hours work a day. Ano? Na yan po ay uh, isang matagumpay na ipinaglaban ng mga manggagawa doon sa Haymar uh, Haymarket Square na dati po ang mga manggagawa rito ay uh, ano eh, busabos, ano? walang katapusan yung trabaho at may mga namamatay na nga po. Pero dahil doon sa pakikibaka ng mga manggagawa, doon sa paglaban ng mga manggagawa, lalong-lalo na sa garments, ay uh, nagtagumpay yung laban doon sa market square, kaya nagkaroon ng 8 uh, hours work day. Ano? So ito po yung history, ano, nung 8 uh, 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 hours work day, ano? At uh, yun na, nabanggit na ni Kasamang Sani na ito po ay isang uh, mga panuntunan na sa ILO, you know, yung 8 uh, hours work uh, day at 48 uh, hours per week. So, uh, sa amin po, ang tingin po namin, although uh, kinikilala po namin yung voluntary, ano, dahil uh, siyempre, nasa pag-uusap naman yan ng uh, management and employees, pero tandaan po natin, uh, alalahanin po natin na dito sa kalagayan ng mga manggagawa ngayon ay uh, halos 70 to 80% ang contractual. Maliit lang po ang organized labor. At uh, kung magkagayon, kung maliit ang organized labor, maaari pong ma-abuse, maabuso kung meron ng batas na ganito. Uh, sa ngayon po, uh, Yung uh, kaugnay nung sa overtime naman, may nakalagay naman dito na uh, pangangalagaan yung overtime pay. Pero alalahanin din din po natin na yung kasalukuyang umiiral na batas on overtime pay ng mga manggagawa, uh, absolute na rin po ito. Masyano na pong maliit no? itong uh, umiiral na uh, batas na ito. Uh, baka po uh, sa... Uh, sa ating mga legislator, baka po ito yung mas kailangan pang tingnan eh, no? na maitaas yung antas ng overtime pay ano? sa kasalukuyan. Napakababa na po nito. Lalo pat kung uh, sasabihin natin yung porsyento na 30% ano? 
Uh, kung napakaliit naman ang sa sahod ng mga manggagawa, maliit naman yung sweldo ng mga manggagawa, napakaliit pa rin po nitong uh, uh, percentage na umiiral sa kasalukuyan. Uh, yun po, at uh, sa ngayon po, di, uh, kangina po nabanggit na rin ni kasamang uh, Sani Matula yung efficiency po ng mga manggagawa. Ang ang uh, alalahanin din po natin na ngayon ay napaka-tindi ng traffic sa kasalukuyan. Ang isang manggagawa po na pumapasok sa loob ng kanyang, pabrik, uh, kanyang kumpanya, ng kanyang pabrika, na nagtatarabaho ng 8 oras, ay halos 12 hours na po yung ginugugol niya dun, dahil doon sa traffic. 2 uh, hours pagpasok, 2 hours pag uwi. So, ibig sabihin, 12 hours na yung kanyang nauubos. At uh, yung quality time niya sa pamilya, yung sinasabi ng mga ilang nagsusulong ng batas, eh nawawala na rin po. Kasi umaalis siya ng maagang-maaga, uuwi ng gabing-gabi. At uh, yun, uh, nawawala yung efficiency din sa trabaho dahil magtatrabaho ko ng 12 hours, uh, gigising ka ng maaga, magta magtatrabaho ko ng 12 hours. Uh, matagal na pong, uh, matagal po yon sa isang Uh, pangkaraniwang manggagawa na magtrabaho ng ganong katagal. So, yung isa pa po, uh, alalahan din po natin na daily wage, ano? daily air, uh, wage earner yung mga manggagawa natin, uh, hindi po nababanggit doon sa bile. Ano? Kung yung po bang nagtrabaho ng four days, after four days, yung bang trabaho nung nawala sa kanya na two days, wala na, uh, siya ba ay may sweldo rin? Sa pagkakaalam ko po, eh wala na siyang sweldo. Aasa na lang po siya doon sa overtime. So, ibig sabihin, kung daily rate, ang sahod ng manggagawa, mawawala po yung dalawang araw na sweldo niya. At yung makukuha niyang karagdagang benefits doon sa uh, overtime, eh hindi pa rin po sapat yun. Doon sa nawalang dalawang araw na trabaho para sa kanya. So kaya po napakahirap, napaka baka po kami singilin ng mga apo namin sa mga darating na araw pagka naging batas ito no na matindi po ang epekto nito sa mga manggagawa. Ang sinasabi pong isang dahilan ng mga nagsusulong traffic eh. Pero palagi ko po meron tayong ibang paraan para ma-resolve natin yung traffic. Meron po akong idea no. Uh, Dati po kasi, ang sahod ng mga manggagawa, buong bansa. Pantay-pantay, yan din po yung pangako ni Pangulong Duterte na dapat ay magkaroon na pan ng pantay-pantay na sahod yung mga manggagawa. Uh, sa tingin ko po, sa amin din pag-aaral, kung magkakaroon ng pantay-pantay na sweldo ang mga manggagawang Pilipino, lalong-lalo na sa iba't ibang rehiyon, limbawa, Kapantay ng sahod dito sa National Capital Region, yung sahod ng mga nandun sa uh, ARMM na 280 lamang yung sweldo, palagay ko baka may madikunjes ano? yung mga pumupuntang mga manggagawa dito sa Metro Manila na nagnanais magkaroon ng mas mataas na antas ng sahod. Baka po yun yung isang, isang uh, particular na, uh, na dahilan para yung sinasabi ng mga nagsusulong, mga ekonomista natin, na malaki talaga yung nawawala sa uh, kumpanya, kahit sa mga manggagawa, sa ating buong ekonomya, malaki yung nawawala dahil dun sa napakatinding traffic. So, yun po, yung isang mga, mga nakikita natin na dahilan, siyempre yung traffic naman, uh, malaki yung kinalaman dyan ng ating uh, uh, transport system. No? na dapat sana ay uh, uh, hindi sa pribado, kung hindi sa gobyerno dapat yung nagpapatakbo. Anyway, uh, mga usapin po iyan na uh, may kinalaman dito sa uh, ating dun sa ating house bill. Ano? Kaya po, uh, medyo uh, hesitant din po kami dito sa house bill na ito. Maraming Sige po, salamat. maraming salamat po. We uh, take uh, note of that and uh, also would like to put on record that uh, Just as we pass the telecommuting law, this is also optional. Uh, the more we come up with different working arrangements, 
uh, we feel, as uh, the Secretary of Dole made mention, that there are some industries na makikinabang sa mga additional working arrangement. But again, let me put that on record. This is optional. It can. It, it, it's not. It's not being forced to to any uh, uh, industry, particular industry or, or, or companies. Anyway, we'll give the floor now to uh, to PMAP, Attorney uh, Chelsea Tade. Ma'am, you're recognized, and thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. Good afternoon, Your Honors. On behalf of the People Management Association of the Philippines, we would like to commend these an initiatives, particularly Senate Bill Number 153 and Senate Bill Number 673, as this acknowledges and gives due consideration to the changing working environment, thus further promoting workplace productivity. In this regard, we would like to set forth or provide the following comments for the further improvement of these bills. As to Senate Bill Number 153, we second the recommendation of the Dole Secretary on the limitation to the number of working hours per day, that is 12 hours. So the working hours per day should not exceed 12 hours. In addition, we recognize that there have been guidelines already adopted by the Dole, particularly Department Advisory Number 2 Series of 2009. There is a definition provided therein for voluntary work arrangements. Maybe this could be as well incorporated in the bill for the improver, uh, further improvement thereof. And we also note that the initiatives under Senate Bill Number 153 and Senate Bill Number 673 have a common goal. Maybe there is a way to uh, consolidate these laws concerning these flexible work arrangements um, offered to both the employers and employees. With the rest of the bills, Your Honors, we respect. Before we go on that, can, yes, can I honors. just ask one question? Uh, with the advent of uh, output based policies in modern work cult culture, has your organization uh, studied or you have uh, data perhaps or as to the impact of adopting an alternative? Uh, work arrangement to uh, uh, employee productivity because this came out during the discussions on uh, telecommuting law. Uh, not only the, the companies gained because yung uh, cost of production bumaba, yung lease nung, nung renta bumaba, and then yung worker happy dahil mas madalas nasa bahay lang yung work niya and uh, uh, outputs, output base yung uh, naging policy. Yes, ma'am? Your Honours, may we be given time because the data will be needing to provide you with a comprehensive um, recommendation with respect to that issue, sure, as thank well you. as to the rest of the bills uh, we'll subject of it. today's hearing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll proceed with Attorney uh, Mafeo uh, Vibal, uh, Vice President for External Affairs and Legislative Liaison Officer of uh, PARP. Sir, you're recognized and thank you for being here. Good afternoon, uh, honorable. Ma Good afternoon to the honorable members of the. The fact that uh, uh, attention is given to the older people. So, as you can see, probably I belong to that already. Okay, because I represent the Philippine Association of Retired Persons. Now uh, we were asked to uh, comment on. Uh, House Bill number, uh, Senate Bill number 234, an act establishing a job training program for mature and older people. I might as well just read our position paper that we submitted. I would like to read it for the record because time is running out. Huh? The Philippine Association of Retired Persons, or PARP, agrees with the intention of the above bill to make older people to stay in the labor market as they are recognized with greater loyalty, stronger work ethic, with invaluable in experience and established network of contacts and events. This is from the explanatory note. For purposes of clarity, PARP recommends that the following terms shall be defined and included in section three under definitions. One, service provider, mentioned in section five, paragraph C, number one. And two, service delivery area, mentioned in section five, paragraph C, number two. The general purpose of the bill is to provide opportunities and programs for people getting older, 
to qualify for continued uh, employment. PARP further recommends the following provisions. One, a provision that will encourage companies to employ graduates of this program. So we, we should look into the possible users of the graduates of this. Uh, that's why I think that the Labor Employment uh, Committees are here. Two, incentives to those companies employing older workers as defined in the bill and employees above the senior age of 60 years who continue working, who continue working. Three, include under definition of older workers in this bill, those who are considered seniors or retirees, but retirees under existing laws, but are still continuing to work, still continuing to work. Four, to alleviate the so-called labor force participation rate drop reported by the Philippine Statistical Authority, employed workers who reach retirement age shall be given the option to continue working in their employment and the employers be given incentives for it. Five, such incentive, such incentive shall be in the form of the right to deduct 25% of total wages salaries paid to seniors for income tax purposes, the same privilege given to employers of persons with disability. With the addition of the above provisions, older people will have more opportunities for earning their sustenance without depending too much on the government and charitable institutions. It will enhance their worth and self-respect. After all, the older people have paid their dues and they deserve more care and comfort in their sunset years. PARP, PARP therefore endorses the approval of this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney uh, Vibal. We uh, give the floor now to, uh, last but not the least, Ms. Abigail uh, Grospe, our representative uh, from ECOP. Thank you, ma'am, for your patience. You have the floor. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon po to Se Senator Espinay and Pimentel as well. Um, kami po sa ECOP. Uh, sir, I'll, I'll keep my comments short and we will submit an official position paper on all the bills please, later please. on. Um, you recognize po namin ang, ang future of work, yung mega trends of future of work. We, with this mega trends, we know that um, employers have to adapt to the changing dynamics in the world of work. We also recognize the work life, um, the need for work life balance or work life integration. Um, kami rin po, um, aside from promoting compliance, we also promote um, voluntary good practices. Um, among employers, so mga CSR po. Um, itong Senate Bill 153 and 673, um, like the Telecommuting Act, as you have mentioned, Mr. Chair, it's voluntary. Um, wha because it is voluntary, it's not mandatory, and um, it should be mutually agreed upon by both parties. We interpose no objection to this. But um, hearing also the statement, the position taken by Dole earlier, um, particularly on um, on the overtime pay that cannot be waived. I think um, the body should should study this further because there are cost implications pala on employers if this will be um, if this will be pushed. And if there are cost implications, it defeats the purpose of encouraging more employers to to um, to go into this arrangement, baka walang takers, kasi gagastos lang din po. Um, and then, andyan din po, we also recognize yung productivity implications, yung health and safety ng, ng employees when they work over uh, extended hours. Um, kung hindi naman safe and healthy sa kanila, magiging productive ba? Um, detrimental din po ito sa, sa kumpanya. And kung ang gusto natin ay i-address din ang traffic or transport, um, yung, yung transport efficiency, kailangan din po natin tignan. Kasi um, extending, for example, you extend the work hours of an employee, nililipat nyo lang po yung rush hour. It will still take an employee residing in Laguna to go to Manila three hours 
going three hours back. So it's, let's say, 12 hours plus six hours travel. Kamusta naman yung work-life balance ng employee? While, while there are, um, kumbaga, three days na, three or two days na vacant, ano naman po, parang um, pagod din si, <laughs> si employee. So pag-aralan po po natin siguro through, through a technical technical working group um, let's look into this but but um, ang importante po sa amin uh, sa employers that it's voluntary and it doesn't violate uh, existing existing laws um, on ano naman po on Senate Bill 661 yes we we acknowledge we we re we agree we recognize that for for um, caddies um, they also need social social protection. They also need um, their benefits to to be ensured. Uh, pero there are cautions that we must take into consideration. Um, yung pag-preserve po and pag-enable ng employment. Um, when we when we ask the golf clubs to absorb the the golf caddies, baka sabihin ni golf clubs ay we do not need caddies. Nawalan lalo ng employment. Si, um, si golf caddy. Uh, pag sinabi natin shared contribution by by the employer and the employee, who is the employer? If you say naman po that the golf player is the employer, baka sabihin niya rin, ah, I don't need caddy, I'll just bring my, I'll just bring someone else to assist me in, in, in playing the golf. So, pag-aralan po natin, kasi while we want to preserve the rights, wh while we want to protect the rights and welfare of employees, how about preserving and enabling employment um, for ano naman po for the senate bill 789 we take the position of dole that it should be special working holiday uh, po, working holiday po kasi as um, as employers po um, may cost implication din po yung special non working holiday and then for the other bills po like the freelancers and the self-employed, um, and also for the job training for mature and older workers, we support skills development, upskilling, reskilling, retooling. Um, it must also be clear that um, sa, sa freelancers and self-employed, there is no self, uh, there is no employer employee relationship. Um, ayon, self-employed po sila. So, um, yun po, yun lang po, Mr. Chair, um, we will submit an official position later on po. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Gorospe of uh, ECOP. Uh, I'll give the floor to our senators. Yeah. Uh, Senator Nancy. Siguro, hindi, Mr. Chair, balik lang natin dun sa golf caddies. Hindi you, uh, maybe somebody from Dole can, <laughs> can answer. Hindi, <laughs> yung setup po dun sa caddy, di ba parang similar to, to grab? Kasi di ba ho yung Grab, hindi niya empleyado yung mga drivers ng Grab, di ba? So technically, ito ding mga Grab drivers does not get any social protection or benefits. Pero part sila ng uh, company ng Grab. Mr. Chair, uh, ma'am, sir, R right now, the industry practice that persists I, um, uh, among golf caddies is like that. Independent contractors po sila or freelance to assert uh, in, in that uh, form of definition. Kasi nga, wala nga hong employee-employee relationship. I guess same then with taxi drivers, no? And bus drivers. Uh, yes, Ganon din yung uh, relationship. No, it's a different for, for uh, dr bus drivers. And iba naman ho ito kasi uh, ito ho, uh, this kind of work for uh, bus drivers, for example, is uh, directly related to, uh, no, to, to the business, the core business, and therefore they are considered employees of the bus company. Hindi, para taxi drivers, hindi, uh, hindi yung ganun, Yung grab ho, na sinasabi nyo kanina, ma'am, I think ganun ho ang business model nila. But uh, yung regular taxi, so, same setup ba as bus drivers, yung... Regular taxi company. Right now, under the uh, department uh, guidelines, then the Department of Labor, po, they are considered regular employees of 
the company and therefore they should be receiving minimum wage. On top of that, uh, they, they may be entitled to commission or incentives depending on their performance. Um. How about the uh, sales ladies of department stores? What are they? Sir, uh, in the course of the debate on, on ENDO, ito ho ay, uh, the Secretary has really uh, articulated that they are actually um, uh, directly related and uh, co core to the business of uh, operating, a, for example, a mall or something like that. And therefore, they should be considered as regular employees unless, for example, they are hired on uh, on a seasonal basis, and therefore, ito ho ay seasonal workers, etc. But that but would be 5 to 10 percent of the regular, di ba? Yes, Sales uh, workforce, di ba? Dapat ganun yun, di ba? Yes, Senator. Okay. Kasi sa pag-December na. So, uh, so, if grab, ang answer sa grab is different from the answer sa the, the old-style taxi company, di ba? So, meaning to say that it is possible pala to invent your own business model and then have a different rule as far as uh, employee-employer uh, relationship is concerned. Ganun po ba yun? Kasi ganun yung lumalabas eh. Nag, uh, sabi nyo, it's the business model. So uh, you can invent your own business model? Mr. Chairman, sir, Mr. Senator, indeed we see uh, a number of business models that are emerging both at the national, regional, and global uh, sense. And therefore, we ought, I think we, we also need to confront these business realities head on and prepare, and prepare for their eventuality. Because preparation at the end of the day, I think the bottom line is really according the workers with utmost social protection under the law. That's number one, even OSH, uh, general labor standards, but definitely, sir, we see not only in the horizon, but it's already here to stay that the business models are truly becoming more agile, more mobile, because this, this is something also preferred by the young workers. Na, you know, they own their own little car and they put it under the Grab concept or under the Uber concept. Medyo me flex, ganun na po ang mentality ng mga karaniwang uh, workers who wish to be independent. So dapat din ho kami, uh, I think the Secretary has, uh, the Secretary has uh, instructed all of us to already prepare for this in terms of policy research, uh, test against productivity, for example. I think the good chairman has inquired a while ago anong implication nito on productivity and uh, impact on business costs labor costs, etc. We will do this, Mr. Secretary, at the soon as possible time. Also in preparation for the four-day work week, which I think was uh, announced by the President yesterday as a discussion point for the Cabinet. Siguro, Asik Aragon, kung ganito yung business model for Grab, I assume sa angkas, ganun din yung setup, no? Walang nakukuhang um, social protection itong mga angkas drivers. Mr. Chair, al allow us to look into the ANCAS concept because I think lately lang ho na ano yung TRO na left. But allow, I, I wish to be candid about it. We'll look into this, ma'am, and submit to you at the soon as possible time as to what kind of arrangements persist in ANCAS. If it is also the same with, with, with GRAB, uh, uh, kindly submit it to the committee, uh, ASEC uh, Aragon. Thank you. Hindi, siguro lang, kasi yung, since you mentioned nga, di ba, nag -e evolve baka magising na lang tayo isang araw, lahat nandun na sa model ng Grab. At wala, I mean, yung, yung taxi drivers natin, kasi di ba, itong mga um, taxi owners, they, sila yung sumasagot ng insurance, and then they pay for the SSS, PhilHealth, and may, may 13th month din ba yung mga taxi drivers? Dapat po, ma'am. Dapat Under meron, di ba? regular But, work, they ought, all of these prescribed and mandatory benefits should accrue to them. Uh, but apparently, if you look at it, parang mas okay yung business model nung, if you're a, an owner, parang mas okay yung setup ng Grab na, parkit may app ka lang, you don't need to pay 
uh, certain benefits dun sa mga drivers. Di ba? Walang 13 month, walang fail health. Uh, pag na-aksidente, wala ka rin responsibilidad. So, siguro baka pag dapat nga paghandaan din natin yung uh, ganitong scenario. Because parang this is one way of going around yung pagbibigay ng benepisyo para dun sa mga um, drivers natin. Thank you, ma'am. We, we will do that. Any other? Yeah, sure. Okay, sige. So, since one of the bills, uh, the topic of one of the bills is about holiday or ano, can the Dole educate us? Uh, ano ba yung, the use of the words, uh, sp ano ba, is it a special day? Is it a hol may hol is it special holiday? And if, is there a, such a thing as a working holiday? I, as a term? Kasi if it's a working day, isn't it a normal day? Then how, how come you call it a holiday? So can you, can you, can you, oh, can you educate us? Uh, kasi, uh, darating kasi ang time, we will have to address the problem na of the number of uh, non-working days. I'll just use the generic word days, non-working days, which might affect also productivity as well as the soundness of uh, investment in the Philippines. So who, if, if you are in the position to, to uh, educate us, ma'am. Just, just before you answer, uh, Sir Aragon, I think uh, and I shared the same sentiment of... Uh, Senator Kokono, every time we talk about this on the floor, in the Senate floor, uh, lagi na lang nabibring up yung tayong pinakamaraming holiday, national, local, ay mga taga-ECOP, yun ang sulat ho lagi sa atin. But uh, we have been uh, looking at passing a, a, uh, a measure na rationalizing sana. No? Uh, I, I would have to admit, when, when I was pushing for the National Bible Day, I was looking forward to get a non-working, no? but uh, we, we didn't succeed ni uh, Senator Manny. Uh, although yung, uh, yung uh, December 8, nakuha na non-working. Uh, so, siguro yung as a matter of policy also, no? uh, on your end. And, uh, kasi gusto namin na, na maging... Uh, connected with with, 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 with with Dole, with the industry, with the workers. We wanted to find out ano yung sentiments talaga and you have any suggestions. Because yung rationalizing our our holidays, talagang maingay na, oh, maingay na, maingay na, ipinupo sa atin. And uh, yeah, because you, you're not only talking about the number of uh, national holidays, yung local din, ang dami rin. No? So yun yung uh, gusto nating makita. But... Uh, Please, please answer the, the, the question. You have Sir, the as to the question of uh, the, the good senator, the fr from the Dole's point of view, and I, I think the Malacanang, the office of the president has also issued, based on uh, their sense of being predictable, a list of holidays for 2020, for example, just to be visual about it. So we have uh, 12 regular non work uh, regular holidays sir uh, that when you use the word holiday non working, non -working Tama, no, okay. ito yung pasko bagong taon uh, lahat po ito labing dalawa na hindi naman po napapalitan because it's part of the law now uh, and the regular holidays are prescribed under the labor code and to, to our mind, I think we all know that it hasn't changed. Yeah. Now we have special holidays that are maybe working or non-working holidays. For example, sir, August 21 is the Ninoy Aquino, and that's a special non-working holiday. And um, uh, allow us to give you a... Uh, Later on, I'm sure they, we would have a listing of special non-working holidays. Sir, dito ho, iba-iba ang computation or computation when it comes to work. Pag nag-render ka ng work or you're called upon to render, perform work during a special non-working holiday, iba ho ito sa regular holiday. For us, for the computation, I think we have some technical people at the back who can provide us how to compute uh, based on these holidays. So, no... Uh, 
holidays kasi sabi mo yung special working tsaka non-working. How many how many do we have? And working. There are right now, Mr. Chair. There are four special non-working holidays po as prescribed. So, Iglesia ni Cristo, I am told here from the back, it has been declared as a special working holiday. What about the Chinese? Anak? But the, the computation is just the same for Sally because it's working, special working holiday. So it's a normal day. No work, no pay. No work, no pay. And, and the same computation, no additional payment if you report for work. Yes, for a special working holiday. No additional, okay. No additional payment. It's like Aragon, 16 lang. Because 12 yung regular non-working and then 4 special non-working. Yes, yes, so uh, Mr. Chair, Madam uh, Senator. But of course, on top of that, we... Paano yung local? Yung local oh. holiday, tapos they go to work, may additional uh, payment ba yun? No work, no pay din po yeah. yan, ma'am. Yeah. Yung sa national lang muna, before we go dun sa, sa local, you're only talking about 16. Now I'm a little confused. Only 16? Because there's more, I think. Oh, I remember more than 20 plus yung diniscuss namin last time. Mr. Chair? Yes. If I may, uh, if I may add, yes. I don't just have the list right now, but there are also holidays kasi proclaimed every year mm -hmm. na hindi pa kasama dun sa roster of um, of holidays usual. na nasa Holiday Res Rationalization yes. Act. So yes. meron pong mga... Okay. Ano pa, like may election day pa, yes. et cetera, et cetera. Iba tapos, naman, oo. Tapos po, magdagdag ho din tayo, sir, mga three or four days, uh, minus or plus or minus, ito ho yung mga aberrations sa weather, typhoon, na idagdag ho yan sa non-work. Y yung isang question kanina ho dito, yung difference between regular non-working holidays tsaka special non-working holidays when it comes to computation of ano, work. Uh, pag special po, eh, 30% plus. Y ito ho yung premium pay na uh, kung tawagin on top of uh, the regular. Oh. If worked. If worked kung magtatrabaho. Opo. 200%. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Sige po. Any other? But all of these uh, holidays are declared by law. Except that how, ca how come regular yung ibang holidays declared by law and then special yung ibang holidays declared by law? So it depends. Depende yan sa title. When we, when we use the word special, yun ang implication on the plus 30%. Yun yun? So we, we, can, we can actually declare a holiday na regular yun on, by law. And then it becomes times two. It, uh, Mr. Chairman, it depends really daw on the proclamation or what is uh, specified in the law. Uh, okay. Whether it becomes a regular or a special. special. But the difference, ito, the dif difference in treatment is in the labor code. Na pag regular times two, pag special plus uh, thirty percent. Nasa labor code yon specific. Okay. But is the use of the phrase "working holiday" uh, miss uh, nomer? <laughs> Pero bang ganon? Is there a special working holiday? Pero bang days na working holiday? Do we use that in the Labor code or in the labor department? Do you use that term? Yes. Is yes, it correct to use that term? Well, it it, it has become uh, it's an institutional term. Uh, it, we we use it. Uh, it's reflected in the labor code. Yeah, working holiday. Working so maybe holiday. we should uh, maybe we should we should maybe we should correct that kung ganon kasi ang meaning kasi na holiday. It's a it's a different kind of day. It's a, it's a different day. I mean, uh, you are exempt from work 
or you're on a vacation. Ganun yun eh. So, sa pag-aralan siguro natin, how come na link yung bakit nagsama bigla si working at saka si holiday? Kailan ba nag-umpisa yan at bakit? Sige po, Mr. Chairman, pag-aaralan po namin ng mabuti at masusi ito and we'll come back to you uh, as soon as possible. Um, I, I know that the nomenclature is a little bit... Uh, uh, but do you get some uh, comments and perhaps complaints from, 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 from the business sector, for instance, as to how many uh, holidays are we implementing? And when you talk about local holidays, for instance, uh, I believe it is Malacanang who declares whether or not it, it becomes a, a special uh, non-working holiday to a particular town or particular city or particular province. Is that correct? Sir, part of legislation. But even if there's a law, uh, uh, Senator Coco, it's Malacanang who actually decides eh, that year whether or not it becomes a uh, uh, a special working holiday. In fact, siguro, Mr. Chair, usually ito yung mga foundation day, yes. tapos nagiging holiday. So, ito, ito, Mr. Chairman. Pero when a day is declared, uh, ihalo-halo ko na lahat ng term, ha? if a day is declared a very special working holiday, walang effect yun sa payment. Wala, ha? Okay. Dinagdagan ko na yun, ha? Very extraordinary special working holiday. Walang effect yun. Basta, po, basta andun yung working, andun yung working na, day, na word. Then it becomes commemorative. Yes, but it's the same uh, as an ordinary working day. Working okay. day. Okay. Okay. Thank you yes, very sir. much. To my query, uh, Asik Aragon, you don't, you don't, you don't get this uh, uh, from 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 the business sector, from the uh, um, ECO, for instance, or yung 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 too many holidays, and if there's a move to rationalize. For instance, uh, for instance, in, in, in my case, when, when we were deliberating on the uh, uh, National Bible Day, I, 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 I volunteered myself na and say, if I'm a worker, I could actually ask for a non-working uh, holiday uh, for National Bible Day, and I can give up my Idil Fitir holiday. So, pupwede ba yun? And... Uh, the rationalization of holiday? Pick your own holiday. Mr. Chairman, uh, it's mabuti ho at natanong niyo, sir, sa amin because we actually get or elicit comments both from labor and management in, in, uh, in the celebration of these events in a uh, non-working context because uh, pag no work, no pay din naman po ang labor. Pag, wa, pag may celebration ho ganito na ano, wala rin hong bayad o sweldo ang mga daily wage earners. From the management side, we also get some comments that uh, there, there is impact on production costs, there is impact on competitiveness, productivity, and on, for example, in the manufacturing sector, when they have uh, uh, quota or deadlines to meet, affected din po sila. So, to a certain extent, we get uh, comments from both in the tripartite context, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else before we, before I give my uh, closing remarks? <laughs> Anything? Senator Coco, thank you. Senator Nancy, uh, muli nagpapasalamat po tayo sa bawat isa na dumalo ngayong araw na ito sa ating mga resource person na nagbahagi ng kanilang mga pananaw upang mapabuti po ang uh, panukalang nakasalang sa ating committee ngayon. Sa ating pong mga kinatawan ng manggagawa sa iba't ibang industriya, maraming salamat po sa paglaan ng oras at pag, sa pagdinig natin ngayong araw na ito. We will take into consideration all your points as we continue to work on the pieces of legislation on the agenda today. Isang mahalaga pong punto na lumabas sa ating pagdinig ngayong araw na ito ay yung kakulangan ng ating kasalukuyang batas na magpoprotekta sa mga freelance workers. Lumalaki po yung kanilang bilang at mismong si Secretary Bellio mentioned a while ago na ang, nasabing, uh, ang nagsabi na rin na walang akmang labor standards ang sumasaklaw po sa kanila. Freelance workers are vulnerable to exploitation and abuse because of the lack of protection afforded to them. And we welcome the Secretary's suggestion to craft a mechanism for freelance workers to seek re uh, redress 
through our courts and investigatory uh, bodies. Sa pamamagitan po ng ating Freelance Workers Protection Act, magkakaroon na po ng mga panunto ng akma sa ating panahon ngayon at para sa makabagong uri ng manggagawa. Habang nagbabago po yung panahon, layo natin na makasabay sa ating mga ang, ang ating mga batas na sa pangangailangan ng ating mga employers at ng ating mga manggagawa tulad ng mga panukalang alternative work arrangements na tingin po natin ay dapat pag-aralang mabuti, may beneficyo ba ito kasi kung wala, bakit pa natin uh, uh, pagtutuunan ng pansin. And of course, yung Self-Employed Workers uh, Protection Act. Um, maganda rin po yung layunin ng panukala tungkol sa pagbibigay ng training sa mga older and uh, mature employees. Salamat kay Attorney uh, Vibal sa kanyang uh, mga binanggit sa atin. Gusto po natin kasi na uh, magtuloy-tuloy ang upskilling ng ating mga manggagawa dahil uh, hindi po natatapos ang edukasyon. We should not stop from learning new things. Patuloy po natin pag-aaralan ang uh, proposal na magbibigay ng karagdagang proteksyon sa ating mga golf caddies at uh, kahalintulad na service providers at maging ang mga non-working holiday na gugunita sa kontribusyon ng ating mga kasambahay sa ating uh, lipunan. Umaasa po tayo na makakaagapay po na namin ang uh, bawat isa po sa inyo habang patuloy na binabalangkas ang mga panukalang batas na ito. Muli ho, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat at magandang hapon po. At this juncture, we adjourned uh, all four uh, Senate bills that we discussed except uh, Senate Bill Number 661. Ito po yung uh, act mandating uh, golf clubs to provide social security and welfare benefits to golf caddies and other related uh, service workers. At uh, yung uh, suggestion ni Senator Nancy, we should hear also from uh, the caddies and uh, from their uh, cooperatives. No? Maraming salamat po. Uh, this session, uh, the uh, Committee uh, on uh, Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development is hereby uh, adjourned. Thank you.